kan man säga föreläsning. We have uh, here today uh, a YouTuber from USA, Florida. Uh, his uh, YouTube channel are seen by 7 million people and he has 50,000 subscribers. And he's going to talk about Robert Haxi, uh, future stock price and uh, a little bit about boring company. So please give a big hand to Warren Redlick. Welcome. Hello. <laughs> Hello, thank you for having me on. Um, I don't know if you have the slides up yet, um, but uh, I want to talk first about the robo attack, the future of robo taxis, which I think is probably the biggest thing we're going to see changing life on Earth in the next five, 10 years. And I want to start by saying robo taxi, the idea is a vehicle that drives around kind of, and picks people up and takes them places or does other things besides taking people places similar to what Uber and Lyft do now and taxis do now, but with no human driver needed at all. The vehicle drives around 24 seven or 18 hours a day. When it needs to charge, it goes and it gets charged somewhere. There's some level of human involvement probably at the charging or cleaning or maintenance. So just that for a background and then Um, I don't know if you can see the slides yet, but uh, right now the cost of a taxi ride, it's hard to measure the cost of a ride in a taxi or an Uber because some rides are short and some rides are long and the price of a ride per mile varies depending on how far you're going and where you are and what context. But roughly today in, in the, the wealthy world in the United States and Europe and Japan, The cost of a taxi ride is somewhere in the ballpark of $3 a mile, three US dollars a mile, or $1.86 per kilometer. The cost of an Uber ride is around $2 a mile or $1.24 a kilometer. I actually rode Ubers and Lyfts, which is similar to Uber if you're not familiar with it, in New York City and Las Vegas fairly recently. I found it was more expensive than $2 a mile. It's more like $5 a mile. So. I, I did research to try to come up with what roughly they cost. And I've seen two, 250 a mile for Uber and Lyft pretty consistently. Recently in the US, there's been a shortage of drivers and the price has gone up. So one of the questions that comes up is, well, what will it cost to ride in a robo taxi? And basically what you're saving, number one, is you're saving the cost of the human driver. Um, if you don't pay for the human driver, what are the other costs? And one of the goals in my mind for a robo taxi world is how low can you drive down the cost to the fleet operator, whoever owns the vehicle of riding around or the cost of the robo taxi operating because that translates to lowering the price for a person to ride in it. So the initial goal would be, can you get robo taxis to cost less than an Uber? And my, my view when I look at Waymo, when I look at, um, Other attempts to do self-driving cars, they tend to be very expensive. And I'm going to sort of break down with you where I think Tesla is heading in this world of robo-taxi cost per mile. So you start with cost of the vehicle over the total vehicle life in miles. So if a vehicle, and then you have operating costs, electricity, you have maintenance, you have repairs, cleaning, there's other costs that go along with it. Um, I'm going to the second slide if the slides are up. So uh, on the second slide, I have an example, a 2018, a, a, a three-year-old Tesla Model 3 was estimated in 2018 to cost somewhere between 18 cents and 25 cents a mile for the owner of the vehicle. This is both from Elon Musk and from a company called Testloop, which was operating Teslas, not self-driving, but operating Teslas in a long distance driving environment where it would take people from, I think it was, uh, Santa Barbara, California to Las Vegas, Nevada, and to San Diego, California, sort of a triangle route there. And they were charging people to ride in the vehicle. So a 2018 Tesla Model 3 cost about $40,000. You could figure the vehicle would last about 400,000 miles. $40,000 over 400,000 miles works out to about 10 cents a mile, amortizing the cost of the vehicle over the life of the vehicle. Electricity, Ballpark, it's 13 cents a kilowatt hour. The vehicle gets about four miles per kilowatt hour. So that works out to three cents a mile. So we're up to 13 cents a mile. The tires are $400 for four tires. They last about 40,000 miles. I'm oversimplifying. These aren't precise numbers. 
you get to a tire cost of about one penny a mile. These are, so, and then, so now you're at 14 cents a mile and there's a whole bunch of other costs you add up to cleaning and that gets you to the 18 to 25 cents a mile when you put all that together. I'm going to the next slide. So now imagine the 2023 Tesla Compact that Elon Musk and Drew Baglino hinted at at Battery Day. Drew Baglino is the number two, probably the number two guy at Tesla. They said the vehicle is going to cost $25,000. And Elon has frequently said he's aiming for million mile life for the vehicles. Well, that gets the cost of amortizing the vehicle down from 10 cents a mile down to two and a half cents a mile. The electricity cost, if the vehicle's much more efficient, that lowers the cost. You can't get that much more efficient, but maybe they can get to six miles a kilowatt hour up from four miles a kilowatt hour. And that gets to two cents a mile. Maybe they can make the tires last longer. Elon has talked about using low rolling resistance tires. Maybe the vehicle weighs less, so it puts less wear and tear on the tires. I think there's a lot of different options there, but you pretty clearly get the cost of the tires down well below one cent a mile. And I think this can drive the cost of the Tesla Compact to the owner of the vehicle. Keep in mind, this doesn't translate directly to the rider, but get the cost of the Tesla Compact that they talked about on battery down below 10 cents a mile. And if you figure the vehicle rides occupied and paid miles 50% of the time, that means it's 20 cents a mile or less for the cost of the operator and then you can charge the rider maybe 25 cents a mile or 30 cents a mile or 40 cents a mile and make a profit. In the early days, you only have to beat $2 a mile at the Uber cost to make money. And then you make a ridiculous amount of money per mile if you do it that way. So I have a vision. This is something I'm actually working on. We'll see if I get anywhere with it of a single passenger robo taxi. Uh, Elon said, and I think he's roughly correct that 80% of all trips all passenger trips are one person going from point A to point B. You're driving your car alone, you get in an Uber and an Uber driver or a taxi driver is taking you somewhere. Something like 80% of trips are one person going from one place to another. I think you could make a single passenger robo taxi which would be smaller and lighter and simpler and get the vehicle cost down to $5,000 or less. If you can get the vehicle life to a million miles, then you could get less than a penny a mile for the amortization of the vehicle. If you can make the vehicle more efficient because it's lighter weight and more aerodynamic, maybe you can get to eight miles a kilowatt hour. And I think all of this can drive the cost of the vehicle down maybe to two cents a mile. In my dreams, you could get it to a penny a mile, but I think the electricity is gonna always be fairly expensive. Everything else is gonna cost something, but maybe you can get it down to two or three cents a mile for this vehicle. And then you can deliver rides for less than 10 cents a mile, maybe down as low as five cents a mile. And this isn't necessarily something that the average person in a wealthy country like the United States or Sweden or Japan is worried about saving a few extra pennies on a mile. But imagine the impact of this on poor countries, on poor people who really need to scrape by and really need to save a few cents. You know, a, a dollar matters a whole lot more to them than it does to me and maybe it does to you. So I think there's real potential for single passenger robo taxis to be the most efficient vehicle and the dominant vehicle in much of the world. It wouldn't be as safe as riding in a five passenger Tesla Model 3 or Model Y, but it would probably be safer than a motorcycle in, in crashes. And of course the self-driving software would make it much less likely to crash. Another way of thinking about it is what about robo minibuses? where the vehicle costs more and lasts a million miles still, and the electricity costs more, the tires cost more, but you divide the cost over 20 passengers. And maybe you can get the cost per passenger mile down well below a penny, well below one US cent or one, ten, one hundredth of US dollar. And then you can maybe charge people two or three cents a mile for rides. So somebody traveling a hundred miles or 160 kilometers only spends about a dollar or two dollars to get where they want to go. And again, less meaningful for a wealthy American, a wealthy Swede, but very, very meaningful for a middle class or poor person in India or Egypt or Africa. So there's a lot of potential for that to make a big difference in people's lives. I'm going to talk about the, the profit story for RoboTaxi in a second, but I just wanted to get, get through that. And I'm on the next slide here. Other applications. Um, towing. Uh, 
most of what I talked about was passengers going from point A to point B, but you would also have towing. So Cybertruck and Tesla Semi will be useful for towing. That's going to be a different business model in terms of cost per mile. Maybe towing is going to be about cost per kilogram mile. I'm not sure how you're going to, per kilogram kilometer. I'm not sure what the model is going to be for that. I also think in a world of towing, we, I, I assume it's similar in Sweden. In America, we have contractors who drive around in pickup trucks and vans and they bring all their tools and all their equipment to the job site. And then the van or truck sits there at the job site for two, three, six, eight hours, not transporting anything anywhere and thus not being useful other than to hold stuff. And I think one thing that we will see in the future is contractors and other people who are providing services on site will have custom trailers. And instead of driving, instead of driving a truck around, they'll summon a cyber truck to tow them to their job site, drop off the trailer, which has whatever they need, including batteries, possibly. The truck then drives off and does another towing job. And it makes the, the goal is basically to make the simulation that we're living in more efficient. So another thought is sleeper buses or sleeper mini buses where uh, people live a nomadic lifestyle and they travel from city to city and they don't worry about getting a hotel. They just get on a bus and go to the next city for the next party. This is a, uh, you know, we would call it bohemian in American theater terms. I'm not sure what you'd call it in Sweden. And I sort of, you know, I'm open to what are some other possibilities for robo taxis in this future world. So that's what I wanted to talk about with robo taxis. I'm going to talk about robo taxis again in the next part of my talk about Tesla and and uh, the Tesla stock. But I'm done with with this set of slides. So I don't know if people have questions. Do anyone have questions? Raise your hand about robotaxis. We have a more question in the end in this evening. In about uh, robotaxis. When do you think robotaxis will be this? Right, I, I, I'm going to mention this a little bit in the next talk, but I, I personally, I think we will see a robotaxi network operating somewhere on Earth before the end of 2022. I tend to be very optimistic. I don't think it's actually very important when it starts. What matters is what happens once it starts, which if it's two years from now or five years from now, there aren't enough vehicles to make the robo taxis have a big impact on the world or a big impact on Tesla's profits until Tesla makes more of them. So, but I do think we will see something close to perfect full self-driving or better than human full self-driving before the by the end of 2021. And by the end of 2022, I think we will see a robo taxi network, network operating somewhere. My guess would be Florida, which already has made them legal um, and they're protected. There's, there's a very nice law here in Florida. Um, Las Vegas, California is a really good candidate because they have the boring company tunnel system, which, will, which is already operating in the Las Vegas Convention Center. So we could see that going autonomous soon. And then it, it seems natural that once they have it operating in Las Vegas, Las Vegas would be more, the population in Las Vegas would be more ready for them to operate on roads. And then California is likely and China is likely just because California has tended to be favorable to these things. And China seems to me to be more willing to try things. Las Vegas would be happen first because they have just one one road, uh, one single road, and in a tunnel. So that would be a couple of months or half well, a year. Well, they have they have two, about two. I'm going to talk about Las Vegas later in my, in the third part of the talk. But Las Vegas has 1.8 miles of tunnel now. They are working on extending that to the first casino, and ultimately they're going to have at least 20 or 30 miles of tunnel in the current plan, which I think will grow. So we don't know by the end of 2022 how much of the Las Vegas loop will be done. Thank you. You to take uh, the stock price. And once uh, I said, you have a nice t-shirt. We talked this about uh, an hour ago for, for uh, Giga Berlin. So nice. Thank you. The machine that builds the machine. So I'm sorry, did you want me to move to the next part of the talk? Yes. Okay, so if you have the slides up for Sweden TSLA, do you have those up? 
now we have. Yes. Well, I'll start talking. The first slide is not very important. Uh, Tesla stock is trading today around US $650 a share. I'm going to talk about the battery revenue model, which is the model that I created and Elon sort of mentioned it during one of the investor calls. I'm not saying he mentioned my model. I'm saying he mentioned something that sounded a lot like my model. The second thing I'm going to talk about very briefly is a profit model. And the third thing, and, and both the battery revenue model and the profit model do not really address robo-taxi profits. The third model I'm going to talk about is the robo-taxi model. So if we're up, if the slides are up, I'm moving to the second slide. So the battery revenue model starts with this question. How many batteries in kilowatt hours or gigawatt hours does Tesla use? And how much revenue does Tesla generate with those batteries? So then you can look at it and say, well, what's Tesla's revenue per kilowatt hour or revenue per gigawatt hour? Once you have revenue in the future, you say, well, how many kilowatt hours or gigawatt hours? I would use, go with gigawatt hours. How many gigawatt hours of batteries will Tesla use in products that it will sell? What revenue will that generate? And then you apply what's called the price sales ratio to figure out what Tesla's market cap should be and what its stock price should be. So I'm going to the next slide. So we're talking about a fictional Tesla Model 3. This is one way of looking at what the dollars per kilowatt hour or dollars per gigawatt hour would work out to. So if you imagine a, a, a fictional Tesla Model 3, this is not a real Tesla Model 3. Imagine a Tesla Model 3 that cost 30,000 US dollars and had 50 kilowatt hours of batteries in the battery pack. That would work out to about $600 per kilowatt hour of revenue or $0.6 billion per gigawatt hour of revenue. <clears throat> this is an estimate. I think the average Tesla costs more than that. This, the, the lowest price Tesla Model 3, I believe has 54 kilowatt hours of batteries in the US at least. I'm not sure what the kilowatt hours of the battery pack for lithium iron phosphate in China is, but I believe the, the sales price typically is more than $35,000 and often close to $40,000. So I think this number is a somewhat low estimate. And of course, some Tesla vehicles have, have higher prices per kilowatt hour and some Tesla products like Powerwall are more per kilowatt hours. So that's one way of looking at it. Let's look at another way. In 2020, Tesla produced 500,000 cars and the average car had roughly 60 kilowatt hours of batteries. That works out to about 30 gigawatt hours of batteries. And Tesla's revenue in 2020 was about $30 billion. There probably were some other batteries that were used in other products like Megapack and Powerwall, but they tend to be small as a percentage of Tesla's overall operations. So the revenue works out to about $1 billion per gigawatt hour. So we're somewhere between $0.6 billion per kilowatt hour per gigawatt hour and $1 billion per gigawatt hour. I'm gonna use a billion dollars per gigawatt hour because that's easy. So let's move on to the next slide. In 2021, I'm estimating that Tesla will produce about 900,000 cars. I think it's probably gonna be a little short of that, but somewhere between 860,000 and 900,000. If we assume the average car has 60 kilowatt hours of batteries in it, it works out to about 54 gigawatt hours of batteries and at a billion dollars a gigawatt hour, it works out to about $54 billion in revenue for the year, which is not quite a doubling of revenue for Tesla in one year. Now, I actually estimated Tesla's revenue a couple other ways. I'm not including that in the, in, in the slides, but I've come up with revenue estimates for Tesla for 2021, pretty close to $54 billion. And we're gonna learn a lot more in a few days when we get the, 20, the Q2 earnings report. But I think, this is pretty close. It's gonna be 50 billion to 55 billion, somewhere in that range. Let's move ahead to the next slide. So looking at 2022, there's a key moment in, I think it was the Q1 investor call. Maybe it was Q4 of last year. Drew Baglino was asked something about batteries from suppliers. And he said that they expect to get more than double the supply of batteries from suppliers in 2022 compared to 2021. Well, if 2021 is 54 gigawatt hours of batteries, then 2022 will be about 120 gigawatt hours of batteries from suppliers. And you have to add to that the batteries that Tesla is producing in their own gigafactories or their terafactories, the, the 4680 cells. 
So you'd get to about 150 gigawatt hours of batteries if you follow that model and you would get revenue of about $150 billion. I'm forecasting revenue for Tesla for 2022, somewhere between 120 billion and 150 billion. Now, one of the ways you can value a company is by looking what's called the price to sales ratio. So Apple computer, or I think they just call it Apple now, their price to sales ratio is about seven. If you say Tesla's price to sales ratio is gonna be eight, and Tesla is a faster growing company and their profit is growing faster, there's a lot of reasons why Tesla would have a price to sales ratio higher than Apple. You would get a valuation with a price to sales ratio of eight of around $1.2 trillion. And that translates to a Tesla stock price of about $1,200. Well, let's skip forward a bit. Let's look at the year 2030. And let's say Tesla achieves its goal that stated at battery day that they're going to produce three terawatt hours of batteries. And they're going to continue buying batteries from suppliers. And they're going to buy another three terawatt hours of batteries from suppliers. That would get you to six terawatt hours or 6,000 gigawatt hours of batteries. At a billion dollars a gigawatt hour, you'd have $6 trillion in revenue. But let's, I think it's safe to say that the revenue per gigawatt hour is going to decline over time variety of reasons. Keep in mind, we're leaving out robo-taxi revenue and robo-taxi profit in this story. If you get to $4 trillion in revenue and you drop the price to sales ratio by that point to five, which I don't think you actually would, I think Tesla will still be growing faster in 2030 than Apple is growing now. But I'm trying to use somewhat conservative. I know this is going to sound crazy when I say this, <laughs> but I'm trying to use somewhat conservative numbers. And I get to a price sales ratio of five, a valuation of $20 trillion, which is roughly 10 times the valuation of Apple computer right now, and a Tesla stock price of $20,000. So that's the, the battery revenue model. Really quickly, I wanna talk about a profit model. And I'm gonna, this, this is just a one slide thing where on the next slide says profit model. Revenue has been growing fast, but profit is actually growing faster. Profit is growing faster because Tesla is now locating factories closer to the customer, closer to the buyer. So the vehicle, the, they don't have to ship vehicles through the Panama Canal to get them from Fremont to, um, to Europe. They don't have to ship them across the ocean to get them to China anymore. Soon, Berlin will be delivering vehicles to Europe. China will be delivering vehicles to Asia. And uh, Texas and Fremont will be supplying, supplying vehicles to North and South America. And that dramatically reduces costs. The newer factories are more efficient. It costs much less to produce a vehicle in Shanghai than it costs to produce a vehicle in Fremont. Texas and Berlin will have lower costs because they have more efficient models for vehicle production. Labor costs are probably higher. Supply costs might be a little higher, but the, the efficiency of the factories is likely to be significantly better and certainly be than, than Shanghai and certainly better than Fremont. So we're gonna see a shift in Tesla's cost structure to see lower costs Plus, and Elon talked about this, they'll deliver the vehicles to the customer quicker. The time from paying for the supplies to delivering the vehicle to the customer and getting paid shrinks and maybe goes to less than zero. And that makes Tesla a much more profitable company. So for that reason, as we see the transition from one factory in Fremont producing most vehicles to four factories around the world producing vehicles much more efficiently, we're going to see much lower costs for the revenue and so a higher margins. So the date I would, the thing I would say to take a look at is the fourth quarter of 2022. I'm projecting, and this is based on my own estimates of Tesla's revenue and a guy named James Stevenson, whose Twitter handle is I cannot enough, his prediction of where gap net earnings, where EBITDA, which is a form of profit or gap net earnings is gonna go. In the fourth quarter of 2022, I see Tesla's gap net earnings reaching $6 billion. And I think uh, Jim Stevenson probably agrees with me on that. If you take, start taking a forward look on where Tesla's earnings are going, if they have $6 billion in, in, in net earnings in the fourth quarter, without any growth going forward, they would be doing $25 billion a year in earnings. And it's still a fast growing company. Price earnings ratio of 100 would value Tesla at $2,500 at, $25, at $2.5 trillion or $2,500 a share. That's where I see the profit model going. And you can tweak a lot of these things and you can come up with arguments one way or another. I would say my $25 billion number here for looking forward is low. And you'd probably be looking at $30 billion a year in earnings. You could argue the price earnings ratio is too high at 100, but 
Amazon's price earnings ratio is like 70. And Tesla is far below, is far behind where Amazon is on the curve. And Tesla in 2022 will be nowhere near, have, growth will still be much faster than Amazon's is now. So let's move on to the next slide. Now, this is the robo taxi model. This is where it gets really crazy. If you thought I was crazy before, now you're really going to think I'm crazy. So at, at uh, Autonomy Day, Elon said that he expected Tesla to have a fleet of a million vehicles, a million robo taxis. So I looked at that number, and this is loaded with assumptions, but one assumption is that a robo taxi will make about $50,000 a year in profit for each one. So 50 million, 50, 1 million robo taxis making 50,000 a year in profit, that's $50 billion a year in gross profit, which works out to maybe $30 billion a year in net profit. I can break down why I think they're gonna make $50,000 a year in profit, but basically 100,000 miles driven, 60,000 miles earning money, a dollar in profit a mile gets you $60,000. So I'm lowering it to 50,000. I think this is a conservative number. I've had people tell me they think they're gonna make 100,000 a year. Um, again, price earnings ratio of 100, that would lead to a $3 trillion valuation or Tesla at $3,000 a share. But that's just the beginning. I see a world where the price of robo taxi rides gets low enough that a lot more people ride in robo taxis at a certain point, you get people deciding, I don't need to own my own car anymore. I'm going to ride in robo taxis, and that's going to be my lifestyle. But even before that, you don't even have to get there yet for the next slide. We're on the next slide here with 10 million robo taxis. Suppose they have 10 million robo taxis, and because they've increased their, the volume, they've increased supply, demand, the price comes down. So now instead of making $50,000 a year in profit each, they're only making $30,000 a year in profit. That leads to $300 billion a year in gross profit or $200 billion a year in net profit with a price earnings ratio of lowered to 60, which again, I think is conservative. You get a $12 trillion valuation in Tesla trading at $12,000 a share. Now I want to get really crazy. <laughs> Next slide, 100 million robo taxis. A large percentage of the world's population has decided I don't need to own a car anymore. At least the rich world's population has decided I don't need to own a car anymore. Doesn't make sense for me to own a car anymore. I'm going to ride in robo taxis. And the, each robo taxi now only makes $10,000 a year in profit. So the price for a robo taxi ride has come down dramatically, right? For, the, for you to only make $10,000 a year on each robo taxi. But that's a trillion dollars in gross profit. Call it $700 billion a year in net profit with a price earnings ratio of 40. Again, I think that's conservative. That's, I still think the company's growing fast at this point but let's call it a price earnings ratio of 40. That's a $28 trillion valuation. And Tesla's trading at $28,000 a share. And this is without selling cars or Tesla energy or any other revenue or profit from any other part of Tesla's business, $28,000 a share on the robo taxi model alone. So those are three models for where I think Tesla's stock price can go. The first two, again, do not include robo taxis at all. Um, the second, the third one ignores the others. And I think you can, to some extent, add them together and you can get, you can easily see I, my own model. I see Tesla getting to when this is, I, I try to oversimplify. I have a model that says in 2026, I see Tesla going to $25,000 a share. I see Tesla going to $50,000 a share by 2030. And then I have some extreme scenarios where things get better than I anticipated and Tesla could go to $100,000 a share or higher. But you don't need to get to $100,000 a share. If Tesla goes to $6,000, $6,500 a share, it's already 10x where it is now. If it goes to 30,000 a share, you know, it, it's just, I have another t-shirt that I'm not wearing today called <laughs> Tesla is the next Tesla. People are always looking for where's the next Tesla. Let's invest in this company or that company. Tesla is the next Tesla. The, the room for Tesla to grow is dramatic. So anyway, I'm through my slides. I'm kind of through my presentation on profits. Do you have any questions about that? Or are you guys just like, oh my God, this guy's crazy? I think I think uh, they are telling exactly that. But we have one question, but okay. Uh, I don't know if you heard it, but lots of laughter and lots <laughs> of wow. And yeah. lots of, oh God, here. So, so question? Yeah, so if you notice the stock price going up, you know who bought. <laughs> All the people in this room. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but uh, what I was thinking about is the um, like if if robot taxis would be a thing, then Tesla would 
cannibalize its own sales for cars, like no one would buy a car. And I, I was thinking like who, who buys, a, the person who buys a car uh, might be inclined to choose a Tesla because it's so fun to drive. <laughs> well, that, that's one of the main reasons uh, today that people buy a Tesla. So uh, what about the competition in the robo-taxi market in 10 years? Uh, wh why would oh. Tesla like own that market? Great question. So first of all, um, I, have the con I have taken the controversial position that most people in the Tesla community hate, that I think Tesla will stop selling cars, that it will not make sense for Tesla to sell a car when it can build its own robo-taxi fleet and it will make more money running robo-taxis. Maybe they'll sell you know, Roadsters and Plaid Model S's uh, maybe they'll sell a limited number of vehicles or certain people will, rich people will buy them. But plain and simple, from a from a shareholder standpoint, I don't think it makes sense for Tesla to sell vehicles once the robo-taxi network goes live because the profit, not just the profit, the profit from robo-taxis is, is insanely high, but also ex the robo-taxi network accelerates the transition to sustainable energy more than you owning your car. So if you own a Tesla and you keep it in your garage for 22 hours a day, your Tesla replaces one internal combustion engine vehicle. If Tesla puts a vehicle into a robo taxi fleet and runs it 18 hours a day, it replaces eight or nine ice internal combustion engine vehicles. So if your goal is to replace the internal combustion engine fleet, you and, and whether you're concerned about CO2 emissions, you're concerned about other kinds of air pollution, you want the simulation we operate in to be more efficient. You want Tesla to make more money for whatever reason you think about it. The only reason you don't think Tesla should stop selling cars is because you want to own one and keep it in your garage, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, on uh, the second point about the competition, I have yet to see a, a self, I think it will happen. I think people will make self-driving software and hardware that will work as, as, you know, as well as necessary to make it safe and, and, and reliable. The problem is that you also have to make the cost of operating the vehicle low enough to make it worth, to drive the cost of the ride down for the rider. And no one else is working on reducing the cost per mile of the vehicle. So you can look at a lot of the supposed competitors to Tesla and their systems are very, very expensive. So the Waymo vehicles operating in Las Vegas or Chandler, Arizona, I think they cost about $200,000 or $100,000 and they last 100,000 miles. So the, the depreciation of the vehicle and equipment alone is more than a dollar a mile. And then you have to add in all their costs of operating the fleet, their, their energy costs are higher. Their, they, no one else that I can see is simultaneously developing self-driving software and optimizing the vehicle for low cost of operation. I will say this, if you leave out the 100 million robo-taxi version and you just go to a fleet of 10 million robo-taxis, there's room in the market for other providers. It doesn't have to be the Teslas alone. The story doesn't fail if someone else builds robo-taxis. If they don't build them to scale and if they don't build them to low cost, then they will be niche players, niche players, N-I-C-H-E, and Tesla will be the dominant player in the market. If someone comes along and builds a low cost robo-taxi that works well, well, that's great news, right? I mean, I think we can all agree that's great news. And if Tesla stock only goes to $5,000 a share, who's going to cry about that, right? So I hope that answers your question. Yeah, that's a really good point. Thank you. Just one quick question, uh, or question, I don't know. But uh, Tesla is almost the only car brand or factory who sells cars directly to customers. Uh, what do you think uh, about the change, for example, with uh, Ford and GM and, and VW uh, W to, to uh, came up with their own software to do this robotaxi thing? So I, I think when we talk about the, the, a very common thing in the Tesla community or the Tesla Q community is the competition is coming. And I do think that there are companies that are making EVs in a, you know, especially in China. I don't think there's much hope for the existing, what we call OEM car companies, the Volkswagens and Toyotas and GMs and Fords. I think they are they have too many, um, too many barriers, too many existing 
bureaucracies, too many different things that hold them back from doing what Tesla is doing, um, whether it's union labor or it's dealership networks, or it's this is the way we build things or the amount of debt that they have that they're carrying or the, the obligations they have to politicians and governments. Um, there's so and, and just the thinking of their, their leadership, there's so many things that are holding them back that I don't think there's, and the dealership model is one of them. There's so many things that are inefficient about way the existing car market works, that Tesla is disrupting it, that I don't think there's any chance for, with maybe rare exception, I don't think any of these companies can possibly survive in a world of EV robo taxis or even in a world of EVs. Even if robo taxi and self-driving cars never happen, I don't think any of these companies can ever break all the problems, you know, break down all the problems that they have to achieve what they need to achieve. It's just not, even like, for example, I think that as Tesla goes from 500,000 vehicles to 5 million vehicles to 20 million vehicles, other car companies will lose sales and they will go bankrupt and their governments will bail them out, some of them. Volkswagen will get bailed out by the German government. Toyota will get bailed out by the Japanese government. They will solve their debt problems. But whenever they get bailed out, there will be strings attached. There will be an expectation that you're going to hire more union labor, that you're going to do things the way that the government wants you to do them. And those are things that are exactly the opposite of what you need to do to make vehicles efficiently and serve customers well. So I, I don't think there's any hope for the OEMs. I think there's hope for startups that figure out we can't have a dealership model, we can't have union labor, we can't have leadership that's stuck on financial models and not thinking about how to, how to and, and not thinking about engineering. There's certain things that you just need to have to make it work and the car, existing car companies don't have it. They're, they're, they're too set in their ways to be able to change. And, you know, I would, I guess, you know, I, live, I grew up near a, a few, a couple hundred miles away from Kodak. The, the camera maker. What happened to Kodak? I mean, they basically got destroyed. They didn't all of a sudden start building phones to take pictures. They just got destroyed. And maybe there's some remnants of Kodak left, but they're basically gone. And we have to accept that's going to happen. Thank you, Warren.